The first year students in a business school are split into six sections. In 2019, the business statistics course was taught in these sections by Annie, Betty, Chetan, Dave, Isha, and Fakir. I love these sets which have which help me think in terms of A, B, C, D, E, F. I hate it when they say um, Aditya, Anish, Annie, and etc., etc., etc. Four names starting with A and three names starting with B. That drives me bonkers. And so, anyway, all six sections had a common midterm and a common end term. So likely it is going to be in your IMs worth hundred marks each. Wonderful. ET contained more questions than MT. ET contained more questions than MT. Questions for MT and ET were prepared collectively by the six faculty members. Considering MT and ET together, each faculty member prepared the same number of questions. I like love constraints like these. And so straight away, my mind is saying, okay, total number of questions equal to multiple of six. Why there are six faculty members? Each of them has created an equal number of questions. So MT and ET put together, the total number of questions should be a multiple of six. Brilliant. Now each of MT and ET had at least four questions that are worth five marks each. Five mark questions, at least four. At least three questions that were 10 marks each. 10 mark questions, at least three. And at least two that were worth 15 marks each. 15, two plus. In both MT and ET, all the five mark questions preceded the 10 mark questions. All the 15 mark questions followed the 10 mark questions. Right, so. so we have a bunch of five mark questions, like a typical paper followed by a bunch of 10 mark questions, followed by a bunch of 15 mark questions. Usually in, in typical exams, the, the, the smaller weightage questions come early. The big 10 mark, 15 mark, 20 mark questions come late. So there's an ascending order generally built into the pattern. That's what's happening here as well. The following additional facts are known. Annie prepared the fifth question for both MT and ET. For MT, this question carried five marks. Annie prepared one question for MT. Every other faculty member Remember, prepared more than one question for MT. All questions were prepared prepared by a faculty member appeared consecutively in MT as well as ET. Oh, this is very interesting. That means, so the five mark questions and 10 mark questions are there. The If Annie has created one question, then the question preceding it after it are likely to be Annie. The, the, they're creating questions in bunches. You're not the first question and last question are not produced by the, prepared by the same person, right? Chetan prepared the third question in both e MT and ET. Isha prepared the eighth question in both. Fakir prepared the first question of MT and the last one in ET. They prepared the last question of MT and the first one in ET. Fine. I'm not even registering these. Fine. My, my mind can't process all these facts. I'm just reading it out loud. And if I'm doing this question, I begin solving at this level. And then I look at this bunch of content. The first set sets up the stage for you. These are constraints that help us tell which teacher has prepared which question? First of all, I want to know how many of each type are there in MT and ET and what sequence they are in. And then I'll go to individual teachers. And this is going to be the, I'm going to start solving this at this level. I'm not reading this because I cannot retain all that information and then find more constraints. That becomes incredibly challenging. Right? So, so what have we got here? Five mark questions, at least four of them. 10 mark questions, at least three of them. 15 mark questions, at least two of them. So these add up to 20 marks. These add up to 30 marks. These add up to 30 marks. These together add up to 80 marks. What is definitely there in the paper adds up to 80 marks. Or the additional question, which we still don't know how many more five marks are there, how many more 10 marks are there, how many more 15 marks are there. The additional ones, we'll have to account for the 20 marks remaining. Remember MT and ET, both account for 100 marks totally. So 20 marks have to come from 5 mark, 10 mark and 15 mark question. Now think about this, I need to account for 20 marks. How might I do this? I could have 4 5 mark questions. 4 and nothing here. Only one possibility with 4 5 mark questions. Right? Or I could have 2 10 mark questions and nothing else. Right? Now, I put two and nothing else, then there's no pattern in the way I'm counting. So four, five mark question is a maximum. I could have three, two, one, zero. I'm gonna count like this. Three, five mark questions account for 15 marks, and it's impossible. I cannot have anything more with 10 marks and 15 marks to account for the five marks. 
or I could have two five mark questions. Fine, so that add up to ten marks, and then one ten mark question, and then zero. This is a possibility. In R, I could have one five mark question. I need to account for fifteen marks more. Zero ten mark question, one fifteen mark question. Nothing else is possible with one five mark question because I need to account for fifteen marks remaining. That can come from one fifteen mark question. Nothing else. Or I can have zero five mark questions. That means I'll have two ten mark questions. No fifteen mark question. Nothing else is possible. Brilliant. These are the only four possibilities for the remaining questions. These four plus three plus two nine questions are there already in each of those, accounting for eighty marks. Beyond these nine questions, I could have four zero zero two one zero one zero one zero two zero. Brilliant. These are the possibilities for the five mark, ten mark, and fifteen mark questions. Now let's come back to the other constraint. The end term has more questions than the mid term. I could have a total of four additional questions, three additional questions, two additional questions, and two additional questions. End term is greater than mid term, or end term could be four, mid term could be three or two. End term could be three, mid term could be two. Additional questions. Right? Now this is one condition. The second condition is the total number of questions. Is a multiple of six that we know. We know that M T has nine questions, E T has nine questions. Both that we have already accounted for. We have already accounted for eighteen questions. The total number of questions has to be a multiple of six that we already noticed. That means the total can be twenty-four or thirty or thirty-six. It cannot be thirty, thirty-six. It has to be twenty-four because then we are only adding so many questions. We are not adding twelve extra questions. So since it has to be only Twenty-four. I'm going to add six new questions. Four plus three seven. That's ruled out. Four plus two six. That works. Three and two five. That's ruled out. Or my end term has four questions. Mid term has two questions. Or this scenario is ruled out. End term is this scenario. End term will totally have nine plus four equal to thirteen questions. Mid term is either this or this. Mid term will totally have nine plus two equal to eleven questions. Brilliant! Now we've got this entirely covered clearly. And so, this is going to be end term. This is going to be impossible. One of these two is going to be mid term. So we've come this far. Now what do we do? Now we can write down the questions. This is mid term. This is end term. We've got two possibilities for mid term. Only one possibility for end term. First four questions are five, 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 five. Then four more five mark questions. Two ten mark questions. Sorry, three ten mark questions. Two fifteen mark questions. These add up to thirty. These add up to thirty. These eight add up to forty. Totally hundred marks. For mid term, we have the four five mark questions for sure. The last two are fifteen mark questions. This we know. But within this, there are two possibilities: the middle chunk. Right, so there are going to be three ten mark questions. There could be an additional fifteen or more fives. We don't know that. So one zero one zero two zero both are possible. If it is one zero one, then this will be a five mark question. There will be three tens, and this will be fifteen or zero two zero. What is the other possibility? Let's look at this. Zero two zero. That means zero five mark questions, ten mark questions, additional two. All of them being ten. These are the two possibilities that are that are potentially possible for empty. E T. We have completely filled it. Let's go for the the condition. The second set of conditions. Annie prepared the fifth question for both empty and E T. For empty, this question carried five marks. So brilliant. So this is Annie. This is Annie. Or this possibility is ruled out. We've got one possibility for empty and one possibility for eighty. Exactly one. Nailed on. Perfect. Done. 
and he prepared one question for MT. Every other faculty member prepared more than one question for MT. More than one question for MT. Totally there are 11 questions, six faculty members and he prepares one. Everybody else has prepared two, two each. Clear? That means, and we know that faculty members' questions have to be appeared consecutively. So these two are together, these two are by one guy, these two are by one person, these two are by one person, these two are by one person. Right. No, let's, every other faculty member prepared more than one question for MT. Right. All questions prepared by a faculty member appeared consecutively in MT as well as ET. And he prepared the fifth question for both MT and ET. For MT, this question carried five marks. Okay. Wonderful. Now let's build on this. Let's see what, so now we can fill this and this and this. Let's see how we can do that. This is Annie. For MT, we have filled this whole grid. Chetan prepared the third question in both MT and ET. Third one. In MT, third one in ET. Right. And e e Isha prepared the eighth question in both. This is Isha. This is Isha. Now we know that these two are by one guy. This is C, this is E. These two are by one person. This is E, this is E. Fakir prepared the first question of MT. This is F. Therefore, this is also F. And the last one in ET, this is F. They prepared the last question of MT and the first one in ET. Last one in MT and the first one in ET. This is also Dave. So A, then these two should be B. A, B, C, D, E, F, everything has been accounted for. Okay. Brilliant, we've filled everything up. Now what else do we need to find? We know that there are three Annie, three questions created by Annie in the second set in ET. And two each for the rest of them are, we can completely fill F, F, C, C, A, B, B, E, E, D, 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 C, C, a, 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 E, E, F, F, the missing letter will sit here. Now we have prepared the entire grid. We can go ahead, jump in and answer all the questions. The second question in ET was prepared by, second question in ET was prepared by Dave. Done. How many five mark questions were there in MT and ET combined? In MT, there are five. In ET, there are eight. Five plus eight, 13. Who prepared 15 mark questions for MT and ET? For MT, it is E and D. For ET, it is F. E, D, F. So, Isha, Dave and Fakir. This is choice A. Which of the following questions did Betty prepare in ET? ET is the second one. Betty prepared 10 and 11. So not ninth question, 10th question mark, not fourth, not seventh, 10th question. Wonderful. So we've completed the whole grid. We've done the, 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 the outline the entire set completely. It's a wonderful question, very doable question, not too time consuming. The, 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 the fundamental idea is here, the moment you hear that uh, each of them produce the same number of questions, the total is a multiple of 6. The total has to be 24. Additional questions could be 4, 3 or 2. It cannot be 3. 4 plus 2 add up to 6. So ET has 4 additional. MT has 2 additional. 11 in MT, 13 in ET. Each professor produces four questions. In MT, it is distributed as two, 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 and one. In ET, it will be two, 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 and three. Annie being the one with one and three. The rest falling in place equally. 